It's been a while since I've done a proper nerd spreadsheet video, so I thought it was about time to break out the analytics to answer a quite specific question that I, has been on my mind for a little while now, and that's whether or not the way we run our home is carbon neutral or not. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, the import of electricity versus the export of electricity back to the grid. Um, so I'm not talking about you know the embedded carbon of the house or the equipment that we bought, any of that stuff. So uh, uh, before anyone mentions any of that, I'm going to be ignoring all of that. That's an entirely different video. So I'm just going to be thinking about uh, the carbon impact of the um, of the energy that we draw from the grid uh, versus what we can then offset by exporting um, excess solar or our battery back out to the grid, for example. So um, I my hypothesis was that we were probably quite close to being carbon neutral because typically what we do is um, in the winter we'll fill the battery overnight um, which typically is quite low carbon and then we use that to run the house for as much as we can and then in the summer what we would tend to do is any excess um, that we fill our battery with we would force export back to the grid during the sort of 4 till 7 p.m. peak period which um, you typically get a very good export rate uh, from tariffs like octopus flux or intelligent flux which we were on uh, for the summer and uh, typically the carbon uh, intensity of the grid is somewhat higher in that sort of early evening period so I was thinking well if we're exporting back to the grid at high carbon and importing at low carbon maybe that means we're actually offsetting uh, our our carbon impact of, um, of everything that we consume despite the fact that we generate roughly just over 5,000 kilowatt hours about 5,200 on an average year um, uh, of you know gener of solar generation that we can theoretically export uh, but we consume closer to um, 7,800, uh, 8,000, something like that, kilowatt hours. So we're short 3,000 kilowatt hours. So my question was, despite the fact that we're not generating quite enough to cover our annual consumption, given the fact that we're exporting at high carbon but importing at low carbon, does that make us carbon neutral? Well, it turns out we're miles off. So uh, yeah, let me show you what I did and... Um, um, show you why uh, I think we're going to need a little bit more generation to cover that shortfall. Right, so this is my spreadsheet. I've got a bunch of numbers here. I'll explain all that in a second. And then I've got my results over here. I'll come to that shortly. Um, but essentially what I did was I found a, a good source of uh, UK grid carbon intensity. Um, I'll link to that in the description if you're interested to, to download uh, the data yourself and do your own analysis. But um, basically that's what these first few columns are. You can see carbon intensity here. So this is um, grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour um, in each uh, half hour block. So um, uh, obviously the grid has a mixture of different generation types. So depending on what happens to be generating at the time, you might have a different uh, intensity of carbon. So when there's a lot of wind, this would be uh, quite a low value. And when there's a lot of gas, it would be much, much higher. So um, that's the idea behind grabbing that data. And then what I've done is I've gone through all of my um, monthly spreadsheets that I show in my stats videos. Um, for those of you who um, watch the channel regularly, you'll uh, you'll know what I'm, I'm talking about there. And that's what all this stuff is. Um, and basically what I do is I download the data that I can get from Octopus um, each month and that will tell me what my import in kilowatt hours is for, ev for every given half hour block and what we export in any given half hour block. Um, and what I can do from that is I can basically um, take the carbon intensity of the grid. So this is the UK national average, by the way, not our regional uh, data. To get the regional data was much more of a pain. So I went, for, went with the national average, and I think that's reasonable. Uh, we're in Gloucestershire, so I think it's classified as the West Midlands. Um, it's pretty um, average compared to the rest of the UK. So I thought this was probably reasonable to do. Um, so what I've done is I've multiplied the carbon intensity of each half an hour by how many kilowatt hours we either consumed or exported in those in that given half hour and then that's given me the total uh, imported uh, grams of carbon dioxide and uh, exported grams of carbon dioxide and then what I can do is is add all these up into the different half hour blocks and see where we're at um, so that's the idea behind that uh, so let me just scroll across and I'll show you the actual results um, so what I've done is I've broken this up into a couple of different periods. I've done the whole of 2024, so this whole year block here. And then I've also done uh, July onwards, so the second half of the year in this block here. And the reason I've done that is because it was in July when we got our Mixergy uh, IHP cylinder, which um, 
quite significantly reduced our hot water consumption or the electricity we use to, to heat our hot water. So I was just curious to see if that made any impact at all. Um, but let's, uh, let's start with the whole year data. And uh, what I've done here is I've got the, the total kilowatt hours in these three um, cells here. Um, firstly, what we imported in total. So you can see that we imported 7,551 and a half kilowatt hours for 2024. And then the exports, we exported 4,495.1 kilowatt hours. Um, but we actually consumed, so this is everything that we we used, um, you know, charging the car, running the heating, heating the hot water, um, the TV, the microwave, the oven, everything else, is 7,826.4. So you'll see that it's actually quite close to what we imported. So typically we're importing roughly the same as what we consume and then most of it then most of our solar generation then gets exported now the reason for that is the the, the tariff rates are are low overnight and the export rate is quite good during the day so the best um, strategy at the moment at least um, given the current tariff rates is to fill your battery overnight and then any excess solar just goes straight out to the grid that's uh, that's the way things are right now um, and then of course what i've done here is um, for the import and the export i've just i've just added up you know all of these these values in these different columns here. So um, the uh, this value is just the sum of all of the grams of CO2 um, summed up over the year, and ditto for the export is is the sum of this column here. And then what I've done here is I've just taken the difference between those. Um, so the the net is just uh, how many grams of CO2 uh, we imported minus how many grams of CO2 uh, we exported. Um, well, I say exported, you know what I mean. Uh, uh, by, by exporting our, our power back to the grid, we have um, saved 465 kilograms of CO2, but we imported 854.9 grams of CO2 from the grid. Uh, so the, so we're actually, we're not even close to being um, carbon neutral. We're, we're, we're still uh, using effectively uh, nearly 400 kilograms of CO2 across the year. Which um, I was quite surprised at. Um, why? Why is it that, despite the fact that we import at low carbon and export at high carbon, why are we still so far out? Um, so what I did was I broke that down then into um, what is, what are the grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour? Because I think that's a little bit more instructive. Basically, all I've done is um, is divide one one of these this value by the other value. Um, so total number of, um, of gram, kilograms of CO2 divided by the total number of uh, kilowatt hours and that gives you the uh, the import uh, grams uh, grams of co2 per kilowatt hour imported and the grams of co2 per kilowatt hour exported and you can see actually that the um, exported uh, power actually had a lower carbon impact than the imported uh, uh, power which was completely opposite to what i was expecting i was expecting this to be high and this to be low um so yeah i was a bit confused by that um and uh, yeah, I'll show you the reason for that in a minute. Uh, in this cell here, what I've got uh, as a comparison is the grid average. So what, what I mean by the grid average is just the flat um, average of all of the um, of all of these values, basically. So the, the carbon intensity. So um, this is a straight average of all of these values. It's not weighted by consumption of use of the grid, for example. So what I mean by that is. Typically, uh, more uh, more consumption happens in the evening when the carbon intensity is higher. So, actually, the 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 true carbon impact of you know of a normal person consuming from the grid would be higher than this. This value is assuming you consume at a constant rate throughout the day. So that's um, just to give you a sort of uh, an idea. So we're definitely lower than that, which is which is great. Um, but our export is also lower than that, which is not great. Um, and uh, just as a uh, for completeness, what I've done in this cell here is I've taken um, our total consumption uh, and uh, worked out what our um, the net grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour is. So uh, it's taking you know the, the total net um, kilograms of CO2 divided by our, by our consumption, and uh, that gives us a um, a on average what we consume is responsible for about 50 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour that we consume. Um, so that's quite good. I mean, that's way that's way lower than the grid average. So we are definitely we're def definitely uh, doing okay, but it's still nowhere near. Uh, really, this should this is what I'm aiming for is for this to be zero. That's what I'm saying here. And um, just a little bit of uh, a fun. What I did was um, I also calculated what uh, since it's winter, um, what would the the carbon impact of running a gas boiler 
is for per kilowatt hour of heat, and I've just done it in a little cell over to the side here, um, assuming a 90% efficient boiler, you're actually um, generating 205.6 uh, grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of heat. Uh, in comparison to a heat pump running at a coefficient of performance of three, uh, if you take an average um, carbon intensity of the grid of, of 150 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, now that's a bit higher than this because uh, actually in the winter the um, carbon intensity tends to be a bit higher during the day, so uh, and that's why I've, to I've chosen 150 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of electricity generated. You then divide that by three because um, you get three times as much heat out as the electricity you put in, and that then gives you a carbon intensity of per kilowatt hour of heat running it using a heat pump is only 50 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of heat. So it, that's um, it's actually four times less. This is why heat pumps are so good at uh, reducing your carbon impact. Just for reference, um, that, you know, it's a slightly different uh, question that I'm trying to answer here, but uh, just just out of interest for those of you who are um, keen to know why heat pumps are so good, that's why. Um, so if I look at July onwards instead of the full year, actually the picture is almost exactly the same. Um, the, car the average carbon intensity of the grid is about the same. Um, our import is actually a little bit lower, so that's interesting, that's good. Um, uh, but our export is much the same, and our overall net um, carbon intensity per kilowatt hour consumed is about the same as it is for the full year. So actually it's not really made much difference getting the, the mixed GIHP. Um, we've reduced our import a little bit, but uh, I think um, that's been offset slightly by the fact that uh, we're using a bit more energy for heating uh, this winter than we did last winter. Um, so yeah, anyway. So that's the result, is that we're, we're nowhere near carbon neutral. Um, but why, why have, have we got this situation where the export is actually lower than the import? Um, now, if I show you this chart, this, um, this is quite revealing, because this, uh, what I've done here is I've, I've summed up all of the, uh, the half-hour blocks. So you can see um, I've split the timeline along here into the, the half-hour blocks throughout the day. And in the orange, I've got everything that we import, all of the, the, the sum total kilowatt hours that we import for each half hour. And you can see it's massively skewed towards the octopus go period because we typically will uh, import a lot of energy during the winter between half past midnight and half past five. And you can see why, that, why we've got this big block here. And that's also when we do all of our car charging and heating of the hot water and everything else. So um, the rest of our import, you can see, is very, very low throughout the rest of the year. Uh, well, throughout the rest of the day. Uh, in comparison to our export, which is obviously everything from the solar and then forced exporting from the battery, that's it, that's all of this in green. So you can see all of this stuff here is, is the solar um, and then this block here is us force exporting the battery between 4 and uh, 7 p.m. So that's uh, in order to take advantage of the really good uh, flux or intelligent flux export rates. So I've got other videos about that. If you're interested, go and check those out. And this black line here is the average carbon intensity of the grid for each half hour during the day. So this is where we start to learn some interesting things. So obviously you can see this dip overnight is a bit lower than the rest of the day. Uh, rest of the day. You get a little bit of a bump in the morning uh, when people wake up and have all their breakfast. We get a, a bit of a dip here um, uh, during the middle of the day and that's um, I think pretty much due to uh, the solar um, generation on the grid, which tends to reduce the carbon in intensity of anything consumed or, or of all of the um, the average generation during the day. And then we get another big bump in the evening when everybody goes home and uh, puts the oven on and all that stuff. So this is a very common, um, typical pattern that you see. Um, it sort of mirrors the, uh, the demand, actually, um, but not quite, because um, despite the fact that the, the demand is, is, is very high here uh, during this period, um, it actually peaks, the carbon intensity peaks a little bit later because we're not generating any solar during the day. So I think that's why we, why the, the difference in uh, consumption um, load on the grid, um, it, the, the peak is slightly offset from the peak of the carbon intensity. I think that's the reason anyway. So you can see actually the average in this block here where we're doing a lot of our exporting is, um, is up here. Um, and the uh, average of what we're importing is down here. So this is what I was thinking, well, surely, because we're importing it at this sort of level, but exporting at this sort of level, we should be offsetting a little bit. But that's exactly not what we found in with these numbers here, where in fact our export average is, is lower than our import average. 
And then I realized, well, of course, it's seasonal, isn't it? So really, the answer isn't to take the average across um, every half hour through the day for the whole year, it's to split it into seasons. So that's what I did in this chart. I've still got the black line here, which is the annual average. But what I've now done is I've split the, um, the analysis into two seasons. So I've got um, summer in the red line here and winter in the blue line here. Now, uh, summer is, uh, what have I done there? I think I've done from uh, April through to September and then um, winter is um, October through to March. So uh, that's um, just more or less arbitrary. Um, uh, oh, and um, by the way, I have made sure that I've got the clock change all correct. So uh, um, just in case anyone's wondering, uh, I'm pretty sure I've done that correctly. Uh, but here you can start to see why I got the numbers that I did in my analysis. So typically all of the import that we're doing here, the vast majority of it is, um, is during the winter. And you can see that the average actually during the winter is up here, uh, this blue line. And then the vast majority of the export that we do is during the summer, which would be the red line here. So let's take the let's take this block here. Well, the average is let's say roughly about there. Now, if I scroll my mouse across, you can see that actually the ex the, the average export at this point is more or less the same as the average import at this point. In fact, slightly uh, slightly lower. And that's exactly the result I got from my um, analysis in the first uh, in the first slide. It, the import um, uh, carbon intensity is actually uh, not that dissimilar to the export carbon intensity and if, if anything it's actually slightly higher um, and therein it lies the rub basically so um, I, I was completely deluded in thinking that I was we were going to be carbon neutral there's absolutely no chance uh, and it turns out actually there's a, an interesting point here in that if you were doing this strategy of exporting from four until seven in the evening you're actually not exporting at the peak carbon intensity. You may be exporting at the peak um, grid load, but not at the peak carbon intensity. Um, if you were wanting to be as uh, carbon neutral as possible, you would actually export from, well, probably about six o'clock until nine o'clock, something like that, uh, this period here, which actually might well um, result in quite a, a shift in, in your net carbon intensity. So, uh, in fact, it makes me wonder if flux and intelligent flux are actually the greenest tariffs. Uh, if you were to be on Go or Intelligent Go or any one of the other um, uh, tariffs that has a flat export rate throughout the day, you could actually do better in terms of carbon intensity by exporting later than the 4 till 7 peak that, uh, that, that flux encourages you to do. Um, and uh, that might well then give you uh, a way of becoming a little bit more carbon neutral. And that might be what I do this summer. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet how um, I'm undecided. So in some respects, I was a little bit disappointed by that result. So it turns out we're not doing quite as well as I thought we were. But there is obviously another way that we could uh, become a little bit more carbon neutral, and that's by increasing the amount of generation to uh, more closely match what we consume. So that is something I'm continuing to, to investigate. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times in the past about my desire to add a bit more generation. I may or may not have um, some more news on that at some point in the future. Um, so yeah, but that's it for this video. Hope you found that interesting. I will catch you in the next one.